And we're back. We know it's been a while. We're very sorry for those of you that have been asking our relatively small but excited podcast audience. <laughs> we're very grateful for you guys. It's actually, we're talking about how it's the best feeling ever that people, look the podcast comments, compliments hit so different. Yeah. From TikTok or Instagram. Like it's because we put so much work into this and it's so fatiguing mentally and like challenging sometimes when people are like, I love this, mm. makes my day. If you can't tell, we're in a, a different area. <laughs> yes. We are in an Airbnb. Where are we? We're in Houston. Well, kind we're of. in the cut. We're in the cut. Yeah. Alpha Land, what's the deal with being in the cut? Anyway. They are out here. Alpha Land Gym is not in Houston, Texas. It is in Missouri City, Texas. Liars. Which is a godless place. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, right. if you're a resident of Missouri City and you're listening to this, no, you're not. No one in Missouri City is listening to this. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> oh, God. Why aren't they listening to this, Michael? Their BMI is above 30. No, I'm just kidding. I got to Texas respectfully. Since we started on that note, let's just be real for a second. The first thing I said when I got to Texas, respectfully, if you're in Texas and you're listening to this, you are not one of these people. I'd be willing to bet. But I went, wow, these people seem dumb, fat, poor, and just stupid. <laughs> That's so mean. It is, but you called it godless. Yeah, yeah, I did say that. It was I it, everyone. That. I mean, I'm sure they're all sweet people. But I'm sure everyone's here. I'm turning over a new leaf. Which we'll, we'll get into. We'll talk about that. And that was not a good start to the new leaf. Yeah, but, but it is. But it was. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Well, but you, but I think the, the joke. He's obviously there's some comedic relief in there. But what you're saying is like, you can get around. and You can see that there's a lot of people that clearly don't take care of themselves. Clearly don't care about their physical health. And just appearance. take a look at the Uber Eats menu. Yeah, that's another thing. Have, Southeast Texas. Can we talk about the Uber Eats option? Finding healthy food in Southeast Texas is like finding a needle in a fucking haystack. It is. Deep fried carbohydrates and fat. Yes. Pretty much exclusively. And nothing looks like an option that would make me go, I feel fantastic no. afterwards. We were able to find a chicken spot, which is going to get delivered here at some point. Um, speaking of things that we found, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a few Mickey U's is what we're going to do. It's a Saturday night. Yusuf doesn't drink beer often. This was actually, this was actually your idea. It Sure. It's just straight up your idea. That's why I was shocked. Oh. You were right. like, let's get some beers. I, I don't like, remember Who that. Who the fuck are you? I don't remember that. But I said, I'm not going to turn down beers. Okay. So we recorded a three-beer podcast, and then you just did not want to upload it, but I thought it was so good. Oh, my God. Did you I forgot that? about that. You forgot about that? Yeah. Let's go ahead and crack some cold. For the Spotify people, I threw a pack of 12, 12 beers let's on also describe the foosball table. We're on a foosball table. I thought it'd be funny if we just didn't on the it. on the Airbnb site. I was like, I saw the photos of all this stuff, and I was like, this is going to be where we shoot our podcast. These are tiny, and these look like respectfully bitch beers. Or yeah, whatever. They're Michelob Ultras. I didn't. That's the running joke. right. They're low calorie, right? They're is skinny that, girl beers. The, yeah, this is these look like actual, but they're fine. Hey, cheers to us in Salud. Houston. To Woo. us, Houston, Alpha Land, and everything in between, and all the fit, healthy, smart people in Texas. All three of them. And two of them are right here. <laughs> All right. Healthy start. Um, I'm kidding, guys. No, we're not. Let's start with that, actually. Okay. Because we talked about – we were saying cancelable things in our conversation together. Sorry to out you. But no, let's be real. Let's be really, really real. And I want tangents to be allowed, and I want offensive remarks to be allowed. Miss Smoke, I apologize. And I know you're listening. Mr. Smoke, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dad. Yeah. Um, but let's hit it. Because I think that really what I, I realized was I want there to be no barrier. I want us to be ourselves. And I think also the people who know and like us the most, and we like and reciprocate that love back, they like us for who we are. And who we are not is these outstanding, astute, stick-up-ass professionals or social media people that you tend to see who kind of are, respectfully, puppets. I think I would pride ourselves, and myself and you included, on standing up for what we feel is true yeah. and who we really are. So it's been a long time since we filmed the podcast, since the Dylan O'Brien interview. And that was fun. Um, that's what it's, it's been about. <sighs> Three, three weeks? As one sip of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some Diet Cokes, too. All right. Um, I got you absolutely hooked on DC. Can we – we have a client um, since then, 
shout out to Eric Baker. We're going to talk about, we're going to, we're going to ramble on about you later. Um, he's one of those people who wanted to be like diet Cokes are not healthy. I'm sorry. Do you want to talk on that? Cause I think there's a lot of people who still believe that misconception that diet Cokes are not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and before I do that, that's I not how that, I want to start talking about Eric Baker. Eric Baker is a shit. I'm going to praise him. The I'm going to praise him for about 30 minutes at some point, either this episode or next episode. But just goes to show someone incredibly smart and accomplished and also has transformed still believes these are bad for you. These mm -hmm. DCs, they're not. Yes. Why? Yeah, misconceptions there. To those of you that love our unfiltered podcast comments or podcast commentary, this is going to be an extra unfiltered one. It's going to be raw as a dog. Uh, let's, let's start with speed up on these. Let's start. <laughs> okay. So artificial sweeteners, I say, as I'm drinking alcohol <laughs> are not bad for you. Neither is light beer. Um, basically, in my opinion, I've, I've started to really like, appreciate the phrase, stop stepping over dimes to pick up pennies. Hey, that is something that so many people do. And it's never the super fit people. The super long You make an amazing point already. The, the people that have been fit for multiple years and mm -hmm. maintained it, you will rarely hear them talk about Diet Cokes not being optimal for gut health. You'll rarely hear them talk about when's the best time to take creatine. When's the best? It's, you, you have big rocks in fitness and you have little rocks in fitness, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The big rocks are consistently eat real food, consistently get outside, consistently sweat, consistently get in the gym. Mm -hmm. Those are the big rocks. And consistently sleep. Mm -hmm. the little rocks are things that rarely matter that the the one percent of the fit people worry about diet coke diet soda artificial sweeteners are the one percent like they're even not even in the one percent actually anyone who says or claims that they have research to back artificial sweeteners being bad for us i want to clear a few things up number one scientifically most of the research has been done in rats animal studies animal models rats tend to mimic humans the most closely in their they got they got systems. texans on this what they got Texans. They got Texans on the joking. artificial sweeteners. <laughs> I'm just going to get Texans just absolutely up my ass. I hope I hope our client Yvonne listens to this because she's a Texan native. We have so many Texans. We do. And I'm I'm really walking on. Actually, I'm doing the opposite. I'm stomping on eggshells tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. You got to crack a few eggs to make yeah. an omelet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that. Okay, cool. Um, you better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> so artificial sweeteners. Basically. Most of the research has been done in animal models. Mm. You can only give that so much credit. There's a hierarchy of scientific research. At the top, you've got double-blind, randomized, controlled trials on humans. That means everything's controlled for, everything's airtight. Animal models, down the list of priority. And what they found, basically, we know it does change our gut biome. We don't know if that's bad or good. It just, what, what does? If that didn't sound what good. What the fuck was that? Is there someone? Is there a spirit in the house with so, us? Don't. Okay, go on. All right, anyway, I'm going to pretend we didn't hear that. Um, that was alarming. We know it changes the gut biome. doesn't look like it changes it for the worst. Also, the dosage that could result in harm of artificial sweeteners is the equivalent of a human being drinking upwards of 24 Diet Cokes a day. Now, what I told Eric when we were in the grocery store and he said, this stuff's not good for you, I said, I'm going to be honest with you, Eric. I told him that, that, that sign about 24 Diet Cokes a day is what it would take. Mm. And he goes, but there are people that, are do, that, that do that probably. And I said, yeah. And something is going to kill that person way before the Diet Coke. Because if you're drinking 24 Diet Sodas a day, I can't imagine what the rest of your fucking life looks like. That's facts. Like no one drinking – no one's you like – You didn't think to yourself, hey, maybe some water. Yeah. No one's like I work in, I work in private equity investing or I, I work in finance. I have a decent job. I have a good relationship with my friends and family. Oh, and I drink 24 Diet Cokes. Like no. And that person's also – Totally unhinged in yeah. other facets of their life. Yeah. So stop fucking worrying about Diet Cokes, Eric. I love you, man. We'll yeah. get to why we love you later. Well, we that's every – well, that's everybody. So everybody and, – and then I think that opens up something about a lot of people will – I learned the term chaos finder. You want to, to chaos, describe yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned the term chaos finder. And, and it's like people's people who are addicted to finding problems or splitting hairs – and it's like, why can't everything just be fucking good? Why can't things just be fine? Why, why, why does Diet Coke have to be the thing that kills you? You think you're fat because of Diet Coke. You think you're unhealthy because of Diet Coke. Or that's why you're not at your goal. Which brings me to uh, one of my favorite sayings ever from an absolute asshole. 
if you ever get this guy, this guy I know I won't name, if he ever gets asked, oh, hey, bro, can I work in with you? Or how many sets he got left on that piece of equipment? He'll turn to someone and go, yeah, this machine is why you're not at your goal. Like, fucking wait. Hard. Hard. So mean. But needed. Anyway. <laughs> wait, wait, really quick. Alcoholic ASMR. All right, we're good. Numero does. You need to catch up. No, but I agree. I, I agree. The Nice. Nice. Everyone listening on Spotify just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but really, though, I do like his delivery in that is aggressive. But it, the thing with him is you got to cut through the, the grit to hear the point. Like if you can, there's wisdom within him. Uh, to that point, it's like, yeah. The, the timing of your creatine is why you're not at your goals. Like I made a video about that today. Someone commented, mm-hmm. when should I take my creatine with my biggest meal, with my smallest meal? It's like, you're not ripped yet. Stop fucking Literally about Literally fucking it. take it. Just take it. Yeah. And get in the gym for the next two years and then you yeah. can worry about it. Did you life. realize if you're talking about creatine, you are actually in the qualifying stages of a fit person? And like when you take it is not going to matter. You getting fit versus you looking like shit still. I'm sorry. Yeah, you your creatine timing is not going to be the reason you don't get the body of your dreams. That's why you look like shit. You take creatine at 8. Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I take it at 7 a.m., bro. <laughs> you didn't know? You didn't know 30 minutes before my workout? <laughs> yeah. Imbecile. <laughs> so, um, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, I have a feeling that what I want to talk about now is going to be different in exactly three beers. But for now, <laughs> okay. I, the rest of this podcast is not going to be in units of time. It's going to be in units of beers. Okay. Um, but for now, a lot's happened. Our last podcast recording was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Three. Oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Michael also burps every 30 seconds. Yeah. You say that I'm in a perpetual state of digestion. I do. <laughs> I do. Because you are. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all this health and fitness stuff. Your boy be having IBS. Facts. Regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, well, dude, I mean, you came to Atlanta. You spent some time there. What did you think of it? Yeah. Coming to Atlanta was scary. It was, I was, because I'm from San Diego. And actually, I'm not from San Diego. I'm from Northern Virginia. All right. Northern Virginia, Nova, East Coast. I moved to San Diego for reasons I don't even really know why. Um, attraction to a girl and a business opportunity and a work opportunity. And I got really clear on that actually in a conversation with a client of mine. So I'll just start with this. There's a client of mine that exists. His name is Eric Baker. We kind of just roasted him about the diet Coke thing because he said that was unhealthy or whatever. Um, and getting to, so Eric and I grew extremely close in our, have used his last name. Sure. Okay. Eric Baker. Yeah. Er He's the Eric shit. Baker, Eric Baker. He's the shit. Eric Baker is a public figure. Yeah, that's true. Bro, fuck that's it. True. He's actually the GOAT. Eric Baker has his genius, open-minded, spiritual hands in everything in Atlanta. And I did not know this when Eric and I first started, but I did very shortly after our, our first real conversation where he let me know everything that he does. And I went, what does he do? He does all this stuff? There's no way. And it seemed weird at first, but it makes complete sense because he's also an ultra, ultra, in, my, in our opinion, successful dude. So anyway, Eric Baker's based in Atlanta. He's one of uh, Keller Williams' top 200 realtors internationally. And I got the opportunity to become extremely close with him in our coaching relationship. He has been from fat to fit, fat to fit. And he described the situation to me when he first started as, because I, I go, all right, describe the situation. What are we working with? And he goes, hmm, fourth quarter, 20-yard uh, line, ready to score a touchdown. Been here before, but I need to nail this. And so he's like about at his goal, about being perma-ripped. And I got the chance to grow extremely close with him because he was just a guy that is extremely easy to talk to. He's one of those people that when you speak with him, he listens. He asks questions. He's inquisitive. He's genuinely interested in you, probably through being a good person. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he always comes back to this point um, within his own, you know, kind of day to day philosophy of just being a fucking good person. Yeah. And I grew extremely close to them in our coaching relationship because he was very uh, forward 
in recognizing that some things bothered me about other people and I would just vent it and he would just listen and he would give me extremely, extremely insightful advice and also very actionable advice. And he was very understanding. And that was new because very rarely did I have a, a, a someone listening on the other end that could pull out the things that he pulled out and also offer sound uh, criticism and direction moving forward. And he was one of the few people that I have maintained contact with throughout many stages of my growth because of his insight and because of his ears, just being able to listen to me. And um, so we grew really close. He's based in Atlanta. I let him know at right around our six month mark in our, no, about our four month mark in our coaching relationship that I was working with you and you were also in Atlanta. Great coincidence. One of my favorite clients is in Atlanta. You're in Atlanta. And I was like, I'm going to come to Atlanta. He's like, stay with me. And I was like, cool. I'm down for that. Cause he's a, he's like a, he's like a guy's guy. Mm -hmm. He's just a really good guy. And so, um, he also just got a new house place has four or five bedrooms and it's he, a pad. Let's just be honest. It's a pad. Respectfully ladies. He is single. He is available. He is smart. He is, he's the dude. Yeah. All right. Like he's the dude he's got it. He's busy, but he's the dude. And, um, I was able to stay with him and in that unintentionally, completely unintentionally, but I kind of knew it, it would happen. I was at a pivotal point in my life. I felt like, or I was at a point where I felt things were stewing in a way that I needed sound ears and I was frustrated and I had kind of just buried things over the course of maybe a year. Like I just hadn't really given myself time to reflect and I stayed with him night one floodgates, consider them open, just straight up. This sounds wrong. He opened me like a fucking Thanksgiving Turkey emotionally, like the first, the first, no, the second night, first night I got to know him even better. And I went, this dude is really the shit. When I first met Eric, he let me know he was on the board of directors of a nonprofit that specializes in getting the homeless in Atlanta to become essentially functioning job jobbed up citizens um and trust ministries for those of you georgia natives who know it completely transforms their lives massive organization nonprofit he's on the board Br absolutely sound operation yes like he was able to just get to what they do why how it works their success rate just in like a short pitch and i went what and it comes from this incredible story that he has of his own position in life he found himself in as a child. And so when he first, when I first met him, remember I said he does all this shit when I first met him. And the night one I stayed with him, I basically began to understand why he does all this stuff. He opened up. And that was one of the greatest things that I could see because Eric on paper visually is a massively successful person. He's just very, you can hear it in his conviction and confidence. And when I, when we sat down, we were on his porch, beautiful Georgia night. We had just gotten tacos. Um, and I had fasted all day, just landed. He took me out to get tacos at his favorite place. And we just hit the street and went walking for about 10,000 steps. Um, and he just opened up and it was just like this incredible, um, depth that I was able to see as to why he does what he does. And it was like a click to me. And I went, this man is extremely purposeful. And he's extremely intuitive and he's extremely honest and open. And so seeing that gave me leeway to open up to him the next day, uh, where he became extremely inquisitive in my life. And it was like, I'll say this definitively, I'll, I'll be short on this part and we can get into it maybe later, but I have spent 10 grand to go to a business mastermind for two days. That was cool. But my session <laughs> with Eric honestly was invaluable. And it was one of those conversations and one of those meetings and one of those sit downs with a friend that honestly, I could see absolutely completely and utterly changed the, tra the trajectory of my heart, my brain and my life for the rest of my life. And it was heavy. I hadn't, I remember I kind of had this like little itty bitty tinge of like, I need to reflect on my story more. I need to reflect on my, I don't even know it. I need to reflect on me more. I need to journal more. I need to write more. 
And it was like, I've been thinking that for a couple of months and then that sit down, it happened and yeah. it just opened. And, uh, he was able to just shine a mirror on me and also just be a great ear and completely wowed me and just gave me, offered me sound advice and also sound criticism after a couple of, uh, a couple of statements and a couple of my, uh, uh, realizations, he would really given me some fantastic direction. So the, that meeting extremely invaluable and it was 100% a life altering couple of days. He, he, he made me realize like why, so I love what we do in content creation and inspiring people, but the people that want to move forward and invest in coaching and become clients is where I realized like what we do is so fucking cool because they look to us for inspiration, for motivation, for mm -hmm. discipline, for information, for knowledge, for training, right? For the things we have spent years building on our own, they pay to expedite that process remarkably. However, I think it's cool to have clients like Eric. And we have this, this type of client, the elite guys that, that make a real investment and, and get a, a sort of a notch up in service. And it's always the same. We talk about it's the same yeah. type of person, yeah. highly driven, mm -hmm. highly intelligent, mm -hmm. and they've got all of this energy but they've poured it into other things and their physique and their physical health has thereby gone to the wayside. And yeah. you know, sometimes that's what it takes, right? Hormozy talks about to be remarkably successful. You have to be in a period of imbalance. You can't have balance. If you want to be a multi multi-millionaire in a business, hmm. you've got to be like MTS at the CEO of Echo Vision. Yeah. Pulling 16 hour days for 18 months, mm -hmm. not sleeping much. Like living it. You gotta, living be, it. you gotta be living it and living being it. it. And Eric is a great example of, like spending a few days with him and getting, I didn't know his story coming from literal rags to riches. Yeah. Like his come up is unbelievable growing up in poverty as a child to being this uber successful individual, his capacity to, to give back and his, his abundance mental mm, mentality in yeah. spite of growing up in extreme poverty is f fucking remarkable to me. Mm. It, what I was going to say is the reason I love our job like this, I had this, this weekend, a realization of like, wow, with some of these clients, they look to us for all this inspiration, motivation, and information. But I draw a ton of inspiration from a dude like Eric. Like, yeah. I really admire him for, mm -hmm. for his story. And having the opportunity to shape and mold people physically has given us the opportunity to learn a lot. Because these people have a shit ton to offer. People like Eric yeah. have so much to offer in their in their divisions and their mindsets and the information they have. And it's super fucking cool to see. Yeah, I'm just excited to continue to meet remarkable people through what we do. It yeah. excites me. Yeah. It was... Um... Uh, the I have a question for you. You talked about is that light? Is that empty? No, no, no. I got about a quarter. Okay. I'm, I'm one and three quarters in. This one's heavy. Uh, our chickens here. All right, we're keeping uh, in, in to the tone of unedited, unfiltered conversation. You love Ari Breeds here. What. I'll BRB. Just, I'll continue. I'll continue on. Um, let's let's talk about maybe what Eric Baker and I covered, well, or uncovered. So Eric Baker. When I say he opened me up like a Thanksgiving turkey, ready to baste me with knowledge and information, Eric was. No, I'm actually. I, I have the attention span of a lima bean, so maybe I will pause it. <laughs> and we're back. Sorry about that brief cut. Um, our chicken got here. Well, what? Where, where were we at? That I had a question for that you. That guy's phone was entirely in Spanish, and it freaked, it confused me at first. I had to type in my PIN number. <laughs> oh, word. Um, right. Where we were. You said you had a question for me. Yes, I did. I prefer to ask you a question than continue rambling on about this emotional awakening I had mm -hmm. <laughs> for right now. And we um, need to shift from Eric eventually, but continue to talk about your emotional awakening. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, I have a, I have a question for you. So you said you're excited to talk more to these high-level people. And you had a role in which you were working with high-level people before selling them your services as a computer or cybersecurity professional. Right. So working with people in um, the capacity where you're helping them business to business versus now helping people in a capacity of, hey, I'm working on you. <laughs> How different has it been providing knowledge and insight as yourself on uh, as a as a health and fitness expert compared to as a cybersecurity expert when you meet these high level people? How are they? How different are they? What's different about them? What's what's your experience been like? That's a very insightful question because at its core, sales is sales, 
Hmm. right? There is a degree of selling, a degree of selling I have to do in this coaching that like, hey, we do in fact have what you need. I know, I know we have what people that want to get fit need, Hmm. but there is a degree of convincing. There's a lot of parallels, but there's a lot of differences. That's a very good question. I think what I've found, what I have honestly found is in the consultative role I was in in B2B dealing with C-suite people, VPs of X, uh, they are high performers. They're typically high D, like a high driver, as we, we talked about communication styles, direct to the point. They don't want small talk. They want to understand why you're here and what you're trying to do. I will say it tends to be, make sure I'm in the shot here, tends to be a little more adversarial. I don't want to say adversarial, but more protective. Mm, yeah. These okay. guys are reporting to stakeholders. They've got boards. They've got other people. They've got their They're job. heavily vested in their ego. Yes. Okay. They don't want to make the right they don't want to make the wrong decision ah. to work with me. Yeah. Right? To get fucked over by me. A lot of times the people who come to us for coaching come to us. So the door's already more open. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, there was a valuable concept that helped me a lot is that, you know, in the B2B world, but also the coaching world, I think this this concept really rings true is that people hear salespeople and they think of the used car salesman that's going to push something on you that you may mm. not need. They're sleazy. They maybe withhold the truth. There's an inherent stigma about salespeople. Those of you professionals that are in sales know this. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to beat the stigma. And yeah. there's also a little bit of online stigma or stigma in what we do in online coaching. People have Absolutely. Been, people have been burned. A lot of our current clients have been burned yeah. by prior people and they state that I mean, everyone goes into that buying process having stated basically their fears yeah so how mm-hmm. do you overcome that there's a great concept that i've learned throughout a sales training called sandler that is the pattern interrupt it's basically whatever the normal salesperson does do the opposite for example oh cool for cool a, for example we've taught you know cold calling right cold outreach yeah i, I love well, honestly i love sales and business like that's, I've thought about making content around that because I was very good mm-hmm. at it, both in school and work. I love this stuff. So I'm going to rant mm-hmm. for a second. Um, the concept of the pattern interrupt, basically, for example, you have a sales cold call. Most people pick up the phone. The door just locked. That scared me a little bit. Most people pick up the phone on a sales call. I'm a VP sales guy. Hey, John, how you doing today? This is John. This is Michael mm-hmm. with Blank Company. Immediate wall. Yeah. Sales guy. Don't want to hear it. The way that, that I was taught to approach it and worked for me all of the time, like I would say like 90% conversation rate would be, hey, John, it's Michael. I'm going to be honest with you. This is a sales call. I'm going to guess you hate getting these. And that they'd always be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hate, I, yeah, I hate sales cold calls. Yeah, yeah. And I go, great. The only, that, that, that's great because I really hate making them. So why don't we do this? I'll take 10 seconds. I'll tell you why I'm calling. If you think it even makes sense for us to keep talking, let's do that. If it doesn't, that's fine. We hang up the phone part ways as friends. Deal? Nine out of ten beautiful. It's awesome. That's so cute. Nine out of ten. Yeah, and it always gets a laugh because Mm -hmm. you're working with their ego and their wall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking to them. Yeah. It always gets a chuckle and they're like, all right, let's hear it, right? And it may not turn into anything. It's so crazy everyone has that layer. Yeah. We've got the protective layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody does. You've got that. You've got the protective shell of your ego and then you've got you. Mm -hmm. And you spoke to them. Okay, cool. So yeah, yeah. the the principle in sharing that was just like that's a lot of the carryover I find. That's the parallel is I like I've told people if they've been burned by coaches, you know, you probably have been harassed by online coaches. You probably think this is all about cookie cutter programs and bullshit. If you're looking for a quick turnaround, you're looking for a twelve week transformation, we're not the coaches for you. Yeah. Like I throw the elephant out and put mm-hmm. it in the room. It's like this is not it. Mm-hmm. It's not what we do. So the biggest difference In I fact, think, if you tell us that you're not interested, we'll just block you. <laughs> Yeah, I've done someone that. someone commented and said, "Did Michael block or did Michael's account get banned?" And I went, "He must have blocked you." And I sent a screenshot as to who it was, and he was like, "Yeah, they voted no on my account, saying that they weren't interested." Yeah, so- can we just talk about that for a second? So, as some of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> I, I, he's made me more petty. You have made me more petty, but I regret that. So. I regret that. I've but, seasoned you. But this is our livelihood, and we take it seriously, and we love it, and we also live it. Like we mm-hmm. preach it and we practice it. Mm-hmm. So it means the world to us. So when I put up a poll, vote yes, we'll DM you for coaching. You don't have to vote no. No is there because something has to be there. You just keep swiping. People that take time to click no, it's like, all right, fuck you. Respectfully, hey, fuck I'm, you. I'll take accountability for that person being blocked. And you may, may want to unblock them. Because um, that no slot, so for those of you that know, Instagram offers a poll. That's how we collect our leads these are this is a simple opt-in opt-in means hi i'd like to raise my hand about learning more about your services 
um, there's option. You fill you, go on Instagram stories, create a poll. All right, and then you can basically put, do I like the color red or blue? Do you like the color red or blue? And you can go red, blue. And we do that as, would you like to learn more about our coaching services? I and it goes, with this. yes. I and then, no. yeah. Why the fuck would you put no? I should have put learn more. Absolutely. But why would you take the time to click no, you dickhead? Why would you uh, provide them no? Because they're, uh, yeah, you're Some right. people, people are... like you. <laughs> I just want to be like, literally listen to you. But anyway, I took accountability for that. I should have taught you that earlier. Apologize. Yeah, that's a good strategy. And I knew that too. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Why would you put no? Also, why would you vote no? I agree with that. But yeah, why would you vote no? Why not just keep swiping? That hurts my feelings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I take accountability for that. That's, that's fine. All right. That's fine. But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Dude, this food smells so good. I was going to mention that five minutes ago. It smelled really good. Like it smells unbelievable. We're, I'm, I think we wait until I have a question. No, actually, let's keep this one, this one particularly, short, and I want to end it on two notes. Okay. This week, last two weeks, actually. What's the one thing that you would tell Michael from two weeks ago that happened? That happened? Yeah. Dude, that's a hard question. Yeah. That's a very difficult what happened? question. What happened? What did you learn? What did I learn? Let's start, let's, let me perhaps read it that way. What did you learn? Last two weeks. Deep, reflective, look down. He's looking down. Yeah, there's going to be silence table. in this podcast because I really want to give a valuable answer. What's the one thing I've learned in the last three weeks? That I want to let you know Scorpio by Moneybag Gill is playing in the background. Very it's lightly. Such a good song. I love this song. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of patience and goodwill built up in my heart for the people that I love. And I want to... I want to translate the love, thereby the patience and the goodwill into what we do because I think it's going to be helpful and I think it's really hard for me. How do you mean by that? Uh, what we do, there's a tremendous amount of repeating the basics, basics of teaching, blocking, and tackling, of teaching people the one-on-one. Like I, I, yeah. have, I learned in the last two weeks that when I, the people I love and care about, I will be patient for them. I'll figure – like I, I will – I will do anything for the people I care about. Um, and I have found myself recently, though I, I don't know if I've shared this with you. <clears throat> I think it's sort of assumed. I've, be, I've been becoming bitter and jaded by the internet a little bit. Like probably more so than I've admitted to you. And next episode, I will talk about the cow incident. Yeah, we can do that. We can dive into that. Thank you for saying that you've been becoming jaded. Um, Sorry about that. I it, apologize if I give that to you. It's not you. It's It's simply... I love what we do and I understand that we put the target on our back to be the person that has to repeat ourselves. We have the prominent social media followings. We have a position most people would love to be in. We are in, we have an incredible opportunity. We're blessed, right? It's, it's remarkable what we get to do every day. But we're humans. We're inherently flawed and it's inherently difficult. And to feel like when I make a video that really pops, it really goes viral and I feel like I've really made a difference. Like there's so many people saying, thank you so much. This is so inspirational. This has changed my life. I've started doing this, blah, blah, blah. There's 10,000 more that'll ask the same question that'll ask yeah. it negatively. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. And it will never stop. Right. It, we're effectively fighting an uphill battle that we're never going to win. Yeah. And you can't save them all. You can't change them all. Mm -hmm. And for every one you do change, there's a hundred that you won't. And there's a hundred more that'll tell you, you won't also fuck you. And mm -hmm. I have had to learn that. I'm just going to repeat myself a lot. This is part of the gig. It's part of the scope of work. And I have to, my one thing has to be, remember why you started. Mm. Like I have to, I have to hang on to that. All I mm. wanted to do was help people. I remember sitting in the car the day I made my first video. And I said, I think about this when I wake up. I think about this throughout the day. I think about it when I go to bed. All I think about is there are so many people out there that don't know how much better they could feel if they made five different decisions every day. Yes. Three to five. Yeah. And that's all I want to accomplish. I want to teach people the three to five things they can do to feel better for forever. And I get away from that sometimes. So that's, that's my biggest lesson lesson is I want, I know I love everyone that follows me because they take time out of their day to listen to what I have to say. And I have love for them for that. 
Thereby, I should have patience and goodwill for those people. And I should never get tired of repeating myself or saying the same thing mm. because it's just going to mean that another one person, like what did Eric say to us? I've given a speech to 2,500 people. Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. one person gets something valuable out of that that changes them for the better forever, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've learned. Yeah. And that's difficult to look at and see mm -hmm. sometimes because people go, oh, one person, of course I can have one, but what the fuck, blah, 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 blah. No, that matters when your teeth have been kicked the fuck in and you need some sort of lifeline. And you need some sort of like, yo, can someone fucking just give me some, get, can I get like a brain massage or a heart massage? Cause a motherfucker be going through it sometimes. Yep. And that's where like the power of one person I think is extremely transformative in the way that you view things and the relationship that you have with other people, because you get the opportunity to step outside yourself. It really wasn't all about us to, to begin with. It's about them. I have a question for you. Um, mm. I think that I said this to you briefly in passing. When we, I don't remember what we were doing or where we were, but I said like people forget we're actually just regular ass human beings. Yeah. Like I got I got internet to TikTok famous. I this was totally. I woke up and was like, "What is happening? Like mm. why why does that number keep going up? What the fuck? Yeah. I'm making Snapchat videos for Christ's sakes. On yeah. My, that's what my TikTok is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yours is the same degree of like, this is a happy accident, but like we are normal ass people. We're not, we're not celebrities. We're not doing anything crazy. We're just mm -hmm. living our lives and talking about it. And people say crazy shit to us, like negative shit. They have no, they, oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're just NPCs miserable. And they're like, I'm going to project my L's on other people. Yeah. Fuck this internet guy. You had gotten some negative feedback. I'm going to talk about the video that you made for the next <laughs> episode, but I want to know to what degree, if any, did the did the commentary, the negative feedback, all the user three four five sevens, did that mm -hmm. did that impact you at all? Motherfucker, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll open up on this next. I could probably summarize because that would be that would be the one thing that I learned. And so, in short. I got like 40 negative comments in a span of like 20, 30 minutes. I saw people call me a douchebag, a narcissist. I can't wait to see this guy lose everything. I saw like things That's that, wild. Yeah, I went like my eyes, like my, my I like felt a pit in my stomach. And that caused some major introspection. It actually got me outside to go for a fucking run. <laughs> <laughs> Which says a lot because I don't run. Um, you but have I attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'll I'll start with I'll start with at the root cause. What and well, first I'm, I take full accountability for what I said that had inspired people to have negative goodwill towards me. I take complete and utter goodwill, uh, co complete and utter accountability for that. I'll answer it. It did that affect me? Fuck yeah. I think anyone getting told, I hope you lose everything. And they meant it as a comment on it, like user, some random sequence of 12 members. Yeah, that, that didn't feel good because that was another person. And what didn't feel good was that I made another person mad. And then you multiply that by 40. I didn't like that. Um, and I think that at the root of it, at the beginning of it, the thing that I learned the, um, that I'll answer my own question is like three weeks ago. What's the one thing that I feel like I learned? My answer would be open up. And you would also be surprised as to who will be there for you on the other end. And I feel like um, I have the opposite response is what you just said, where you said, we're just like you. My issue was that I didn't feel that way. And that further perpetuated worse circumstances. I was like, I'm different. I'm different. I'm bad. Which is... We, you could argue the semantics of, are we all the same? We're all unique. We're all one. We're all different. Whatever the fuck. But I think where I started to kid myself was I had low views of other people accumulated. And I had this almost kind of like invincible feeling among myself. Hmm. And I decided to view other people's failures as them. And... I started to view my successes as me. And that creates a disproportionate value on every human soul. And I felt in that very slowly, 
my respect for myself in ways I could not see um, and other people began to dwindle. And that's just not cool. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, because it makes the world that I lived in really, really miserable. Like I woke up next day, next day, next day, next day, next day, upset. And that's, I feel a day too many in a, in a way that I caused it to myself because I hadn't opened up and I hadn't viewed my own shortcomings as really mine. And I had viewed everyone else's shortcomings as theirs. Yeah. And um, I think opening up and doing it in a space and place where I was welcome to open up and be honest was one of the most, it was one of the most transformative experiences of my entire life. Wow. I had a, so Eric asked me a question. He said, what, what is success to you? And I, I really, really realized that I had not actually written down a response before ever. <laughs> not to you specifically, right? What do you mean? You had mentioned like, I had, I had asked like, what does success look like to some key people in my life? But I had yeah, never yeah, asked, like, yeah, what yeah. does success look like to you? Sometimes? Yeah. So when I, when he asked me, what does success look like for you? Like, what are you basing your entire self-esteem off of? I went, you, I, went I went, oh shit. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I went, I don't know. And I think what can happen if we get 10 comments on TikTok and we see nine moderate comments and then one negative one, we see the negative, the one, yeah, the one negative one. And yeah. And I think, uh, what had happened over time was I, I don't want to say, I obviously put myself in a position to receive negative comments. You're always going to have them sometimes, but I really was egging them on. Um, and I was unloving. And I felt that was, to be that way one time was one time too many. Mm. And I think that's corny to say, but at least in the role that we're in, like our lives, I, 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 I don't want to sound extreme, but so if, as a joke, we had, Eric and I had stayed up late one night. It was a night that we had dinner together, us, us, and our flight was like, me and your, me and yours flight was at like 7am or something silly. Like we had to get up mad early and he said, ah, another night, three hours of sleep. And I went, at least it's not two. <laughs> and then I went, ah, actually I can do better. At least we quite literally are not getting bombed right now. <laughs> <laughs> like we could, we're, we're like, there's people who exist on planet earth this very moment who outside their door is shit going down and yeah. they have no say over it. They have zero. They just have to exist in it. They have to, they have no choice. They're there. Why? Because they are. And I remember being like, in my life, where I am right now, there's nothing wrong going on. Why make it more? Like, why add to it myself? Why contribute to wrongness when really there's not my fucking kid? Chaos finder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I had gotten okay with being unloving. And that wasn't... Um, I had gotten okay with hurting people. I had gotten okay with offending people. I had gotten okay with uh, disrespecting people. And I think that when you're able to do that to one person, you're able to do it to a million over time. And that type of goodwill and energy or bad will and energy, um, there's already enough shit that could happen to you. You don't need to add to it. <laughs> That's a really good way to sum that up. Yeah. Um, because I also feel like I could wake up tomorrow and we, we could find some horrible things are going to happen. Yeah. And the day after that, and the day after that, and there's all this possibility of horrible things. There's all this poss possibility of amazing things. And, um, you know, if there's any choice that you could have in it, why not contribute to the good things? So if there's anything I could add or I could tell us, I uh, learned in the last two, three weeks would be, Hey, open up. You never know who might be there for you on the other side. Um, and we're really not that different after all. None of us. Yeah. No matter where we are in life. Yeah. Like treating yourself a certain way and treating other people a certain way is no different. Zero. If you treat other people that way, you treat yourself that way. And, uh, I think that personal cleanliness is extremely 
important if you have any hopes of existing in a clean headspace or a headspace that doesn't feel like torture, at least. So that would be how I'd sum that up. I love that. How you do anything is how you do everything. So treat others well. That is so annoying, but true. I know. It's so fucking annoying. I hate yeah. that quote, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if there's anything that would, I think maybe could help someone in the audience would be the Zig Ziglar's quote is uh, Zig Ziglar, way old school, motivational speaker, personal development. Sales guy. Yeah. Um, uh, personal excellence individual. Like he's all about that. He deals often with pessimists and cynics. And he, he says, uh, people will go, motivation doesn't work. And he goes, I, uh, oh, what does he say? He says, well, I shower, but I don't just do it once. I do it daily. That's why I recommend it daily. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that like checkpoint, that reminder for yourself that like, Hey, every action that I have has some sort of fate that it brings and uh you can do it one time and that's cool you'll get the benefit but like it just goes on and it just keeps going on in this perpetual state of now and uh i think that over time his one of my favorite books i've listened to over 75 times from him was this book called see you at the top uh which is the book that is the checkup from the neck up to e avoid that stinking thinking and the hardening of the attitudes. And I think what happened to me was a hardening of the attitude. Mm. I'd lost my softness. And uh, I think that that's where opening up really comes in because you don't open up just for other people, you open up for yourself. Right. That was fun. That was really, really fun. Are you ready to dig into some chicken yeah. right now? And yeah, we'll yeah. see you on the other end. I'm glad you're back to the softer you. Thank Pause. You. But I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're back uh, on the positive end. I, I we met know. because I was on the positive end. Yeah, that's true. And then we also, well, you found me when I was on the positive end. When I was watching your content, you, I mean, I told you, you were the guy that inspired me to be like, all right, this is the last piece. If this guy has the success doing what he's doing, this is how I would do it. Just talk, not do anything crazy, just fucking be valuable. And that's the content you were making. It was overwhelmingly positive and you were valuable. Like you were, here's how I did this. Here is tips. Be nice to yourself. Like you were, mm. it was like, this makes sense to me. So you're right. Yeah. I found it when you were positive and good things happen when you exist in a positive state of energy in a positive state of mind and a genuine attitude of gratitude. Like your intention is everything. Mm -hmm. what, what, that's what we've also learned. I think your together. state and intention is everything. What did you say last night? The difference between we were watching the movie founder about Ray Kroc, the story of McDonald's. Mm -hmm. The difference between sales and manipulation yeah. is intention. Yeah, totally. I genuinely want to help you. I'm a salesperson. I mm -hmm. want. To, I genuinely want to help myself. I'm manipulating you. Mm -hmm. So if there's any value you take away from this, it's to live in a positive state perpetually, no matter how difficult it gets. Please exist with a high vibration of gratitude, positivity, and wanting to help mm -hmm. others. And I personally believe the universe will pay you in spades. Yeah. That's my take. That was what you just said was one of my definitions of success that I wrote down after Eric asked me. Really? Yeah. I said to exist in a state of being able to positively manage my energy to the point where I'm even at a negative two, I'm at least able to respond in a way that is adding mm. because a lot of people will and me included in the past and current. I mean, I will, I will be tested. You'll be tested. We'll be tested. 100%. Um, but it's moment by moment being able to manage your energy and yourself to be in a place where you're still able to provide and contribute some form of love, happiness, positive existence. Positive really just means that you add to others. Are you able to, uh, in great two beer fashion, uh, contribute to everyone's existence in a way that like the way that I looked at it was outside of myself when I said, what's success to me? Cause I thought of it, what it meant to other people, but not myself. And that was what I came to was being in that state, no matter the circumstance, because if things were really bad, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so it can't be bad. That's true. That's yeah. spot on. Yeah. It can't be bad. We're alive. My friends, we sure are. We're alive. You want to do a step check before we go eat chicken? Hell yeah. 
All right, eight twenty six Central Standard Time is that Texas? Yeah. I'm at twelve thousand six hundred sixty seven, and I'm at ten five. Not bad. Yeah. As always, drop your step checks in the comments. We love you. For those of you that tune in, all eight hundred seventy nine of our subscribers it means the world to us. Seriously, we appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Some motherfucking chicken. Ow.